Hey guys, welcome back to my series on HTML and CSS for beginners. My name is Kevin and today we're looking at floats and clears. I'm not going to lie to you, it's really weird, but really important to know. If you want to make a layout, you need to get how this works. All right. So in this video, we're not really going to see how to build a layout. I just want you to understand how floats and clears work. I find it hard because I doesn't really have a real world example to like make a good metaphor with. I've tried a lot of times. I've looked at what other people explain it and there's there's no good metaphor for it in the real world, so it's hard to anchor it with an idea of how other things work. I'm going to start with oh, well, let's just start looking at my my document. It's a little strange compared to before, but it's really going to help us out with what we're doing. Um, floating an image is always the first thing you learn how to do. So we're going to look at that first just to sort of get an idea of what floats do. So if you see here, I have an image and after my image, I have a paragraph. And what I can do is I could come into here and just say all of my images, and I wouldn't normally do all of my images like this. I would give it a class, but uh, all of my images are going to do something called float left and we'll explore what other options we have for float in a second but i just want you to see what it does and my text is wrapping around my picture now so let's just undo that save Whoop. undo 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 ha and save my text is there and when we do our float left float left my text wraps up around there so that's kind of cool and it's definitely something you'll probably want to do at one point or another where you won't want, just want a picture, you'll want your text next to it like that. Uh, what I'd probably add with this is a little margin on the left, uh, not the left, the right, say 20 pixels, uh, just so my text isn't actually touching my picture. Um, so that's pretty cool. Now you have two real options with floats. You can float to the left, and when I floated left, it didn't actually move my picture, but it let the text come up next to my picture. The other option I have is to float to the right. And that will put my picture all the way on the right side. It doesn't matter on my page. So let's say I make the screen bigger. It's always just, it's floating to the left. It's going all the way over to the left side. So my text can come and wrap around it. And it will sit on the right instead of sitting on the left. If I were to do this, I'd want to switch my margin to the other side, just to put the space here. And everything is hunky-dory. That's kind of cool. Uh, if you look at your floats, the only other option is none, which is the default, and that sets it back to what it was. Sadly, there's no float center, which everybody always asks me about. There's no float center option. It's either all the way to the left or all the way to the right. So let's just do our float left again. Um, so we have that. Now, to explain a little bit of what's going on, uh, I've set up these two boxes down here. And... This box, as you can see, has a transparent background on it. So you can see the background popping through just a little bit. And this is kind of important. So this is my red box that I have here in my CSS. And then my blue box is the one underneath it. Normally, I wouldn't have a red box and blue box like this. But for demo purposes, it's a great example. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come down in here. And I'm going to tell my red box to float to the left. And what people usually assume is going to happen is my blue box will move up around just like the text did. So my text went and wrapped around. So it would make sense if this blue box came up over here. So let's save that, hit refresh. And well, that's not quite what happened. Uh, my blue box moves up underneath the red box. And then I have my text here that's sort of wrapping around there now in that empty space. So what happens when I'm floating is, um, picture it's actually floating up in the air. It's like a cloud now. It moves all the way up into the sky. It's moving up higher and other things can go underneath it. But you'll notice my text isn't going underneath here. Ah, but what if my paragraph, let's just come to here and give my paragraph a background color of yellow. And you can see this just turned orange. Because what's actually happening is this paragraph, which is a big block, is moving underneath here, just like this blue box is moved underneath it. But the text that's inside my paragraph, which is this big yellow box, is wrapping around. And text won't go underneath floating items. This item has a margin of zero on it. And that, you know, figure the way the margin on that's working is it's a margin of zero. So if this was a bigger margin, let's do a margin 
right of 50 pixels. And it's going to push the text 50 pixels away, even though the box that it's inside is still underneath it. And if I did a margin of negative 50 pixels, then my text can actually go underneath it. So that margin of zero is sort of creating like this space here, like it's right on it, but it's stopping text from going underneath there. But my box itself can go underneath. It's, remember I said this is kind of strange? Now you probably understand what I'm talking about. It's going to get even stranger now. Uh, the sort of the, the brother and sister of this whole thing. So we have the float, the, so it's brother, and then we have the sister, that's the clear. Uh, they always work together. Floats and clears are two properties that work with one another. So float brings things up in the air and lets other things go underneath it other than text. And then uh, the clear, so let's find my paragraph here, and I can come and say clear both. Uh, it's just, yeah, I'm going to put both, because clear both is what you use pretty much all the time. Oops, I forgot my semicolon at the end there. And there we go. Uh, what the clear both it does, uh, you'll notice now this isn't going up on the side here anymore. And this paragraph down here is not going underneath. It's starting right after that item. So if I have clouds floating up in the sky and other things are going underneath them, picture the clear... This is going to really kill my cloud analogy. Yeah, what else can float? Not a lot of things float, though. Let's stick with the cloud. Anyway, there's no real analogy for this, and that's why the whole thing falls apart. <laughs> but what the clear does is it sort of sets up this big wall here. So it's clearing the floating items. So instead of going underneath the floating items, it starts everything fresh again. So this paragraph here, instead of going next to that, it's going to come underneath, just like as if this wasn't floating. And here too, it's, it's pr the clear makes it go, you know, if anything above it is floating, it's just going to pretend it isn't floating and it's going to start underneath like it normally would. But where that gets interesting, here it's kind of useless, but where it's interesting is here, where this one is paying attention to the float, but this one isn't. You're probably thoroughly confused right now, and honestly, I don't blame you. Uh, let's get to a little bit more of a realistic example. And I'll keep these two boxes, but let's just take off there let's do a couple things here i'm going to grab this paragraph cut i'm going to put it inside my red box and let's take this second paragraph here and let's drop that into my blue box oops i made a little mistake there uh, I'm going to save that, and the only other thing I'm going to do, I'm going to give these both the same width of 500 pixels, and I'm going to take off their heights because they don't need them anymore. Oops. Save that and refresh. And oop, let's get rid of that yellow background on our paragraphs. Paragraph, background color yellow, gone. And let's get rid of the clear too, we don't need that. Um, and let's get rid of my float and refresh. Okay, so we're back to normal. Uh, blue box, let's also make our text color white and refresh. So I have one box here and one box here. And what if I want these two boxes to be next to one another? What I need to do is I'm going to take my red box and I'm going to do a float left. And then I'm going to take my blue box and do a float right. I'm going to save this and refresh, and oh no, my page isn't big enough. There we go. They have room. They go next to each other. So this is floating to the left. This is floating to the right. They can go next to one another. Uh, the problem is if this gets smaller, that drops down and goes underneath because there's not enough room. So to really show you what's happening with floats and clears, I've created this other page here where I have 10 boxes going down the screen. And what I'm going to look at is um, I'm going to start off just by floating this first box. Now, what's really important here is all of them have the same width and height. So you can see they're all the same size. Uh, so if I come here and I just take box one and it goes in order. Let's make that a little bigger. Um, so I get box one down to box nine down there. And so if I take box one and I float this one to the left, Actually, I'm going to start by floating it to the right so we can see what happens. So when I float that to the right, this, and when I refresh my page, this pink box is going to shoot over to the right side and everything else will move up. That's sort of what you'd expect at this point. Uh, I'm 
floating it so it can move over and other things can come there instead of being stacking one on top of each other. But if I float it to the left, whoops, float left. So just like in that last uh, section we were looking at on the other page, the um, content below would go underneath that. If I change my pink here, uh, let's just make it RGBA. I'm gonna make it a bit transparent. Uh, just make it black, zero, 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 two, five. So we can see that red box is underneath it. Change it back to pink. Uh, so my red box is underneath. But now if I take this box two, which is my red box, and I float this one, float left, what do you think is gonna happen? Let's hit refresh and find out. And my red box moves up to here. And we also lost that dark uh, red one. Fire brick here is a darker red. That darker red went underneath this pink box. We can't see it anymore. So if I float my fire brick, float left, that one's gonna jump up to over here now. And the other ones move under here. So what's happening when we're using our floats is it's changing how the element is working. Before that, uh, these are block level elements. So they're taking up all the space on my screen here, even though they're just sort of stacking. Like we said, they're like Legos. They like clicking together and stacking one on top of each other. When I float, it completely changes how they work. It's allowing other elements to go under them. They're floating up in the air, and my, my column here can shimmy up underneath. But they start working together. Instead of going underneath each other and all that, they've all floated up to the same level, and they can work together. But now, instead of... Um, going one underneath it, they have space to go one next to each other. And this is kind of weird. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'll take my floats off here so we don't have to do them all one by one. And I'm just going to say all my boxes have a float left. Hit refresh and there we go. I get a nice big line like that. And what's really important here is if I change the size of my browser, you can see that when I get to here, uh, what's happening is the boxes are falling underneath. So they're staying in the same order, but when they run out of room, they start uh, stacking, you know, they don't have room here, they're not gonna stay there, they're gonna slip down to the next line and start going across like that, which is important. And that's why when I was looking at this one, when I ran out of room, that blue box would fall and come down here instead. So it didn't have enough room, it's floating right, so it's staying on the right side. But these two, they're interacting with each other. They can't fit next to each other, so they go one on top of each other again. So the same thing is happening here, where they're falling down one after each other. And another thing we can do is we can do a float right. So if I take a float right and I save that, let's hit a refresh, so all of them are gonna float right instead. And they go in a reverse order, and this is really weird. What's happening is box one is the first one. So box one is floating up all the way to the right. And then box two is going up to the right. It can't go past box one. Box one is already here. So it doesn't push box one out of the way. It just snuggles up next to it. And then the third one and the fourth one, and they all line up one after each other. So you have to be very careful with float right. Uh, it can, if you have more than one thing floating to the right, it will reverse the order of them. So that's really important to remember. In general, most things I do float left, and occasionally we float the last element or something to the right just to make sure that it's lining up properly. But float left is something we use a little bit more often. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna come on my yellow box here, which I think is box five, yeah. And I'm gonna put a clear on this one. So I'm gonna say clear both. I'm gonna save that, and I'm gonna come here and push refresh. And you can see that it's no longer going next to this orange one, it's coming and falling onto its own line. So box five is really, um, you know, this clear is really important. It's f the clear always forces a new line. It's saying ignore the things that are floating above it and instead come and start down here. The reason I'm putting clear both is the only options we have are clear both, clear left, or clear right. If something is set to clear right, let's save that, refresh, it's like nothing ever happened up here. It's only paying attention to things that are floating to the right. If nothing's floating to the right, it's as if this clear is not there. And if I did a float left, because everything up here is floating to the left, it pays attention to all of them. 
So this is also important to know. Uh, in general, clear both is what you want to use like 99% of the time. So pretty much every time you use clear, it will be a clear both. It makes it a little bit easier to remember. Just use clear both. You might be a little unsure right now on when you actually want to be using clears, and that's fine. Um, it's a little abstract, it's really strange right now. In just a few videos though, we're going to get around to actually making some layouts. And when that happens, this is all going to make a lot more sense. Um, just on how it works and why we want to do it. So keep all of this in mind, play around with it a little bit, see if you can't get a better understanding of what's really going on. If you have any questions about it, do please leave them down in the comments below. I'll do my best to help out. And if you like the video, please uh, hit the like. And I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.